Jane and I came to live here about 1996, having been invited to join this incipient community aimed at self-sufficiency and stuff like that on quite a big farm with lots of woodland. So we had the opportunity of building a new house or den uh, down in the corner of the woods. Uh, we were invited to do that because I'd been experimenting with dens and um, we'd done our music practice in a wooden teepee for a few years. So uh, I'd built up a bit of experience in um, building various wacky structures. So I took the opportunity here of building one down in the corner of the woods based on an American Indian design from the Miwok and the Mandan peoples and with a bit of Celtic thrown in and a skylight and uh, recycled windows and my own kind of design plumbing and solar heating system for the water and a back boiler uh, and a nice wood, wood stove and um, all that kind of stuff and so it worked quite well really and uh, then we were spotted by the National Park we should have asked for planning permission in advance but I was advised that there was a hope in hell of getting it and we were at the time also negotiating or talking to the planning people about the possibility of a new low impact policy and they, they were kind of thinking about that at the same time around the year 2000. <coughs> so we've got a nice situation here, you see? We've got a big branch off this oak tree that's been that's cracked nicely and got stuck on a fork of an extremely dead bit of aspen and it's propped up by a tiny bit of um, hawthorn that I've actually sawed three quarters of the way through. So this whole branch, maybe a ton of wood, is held up by a couple of kind of <laughs> little ton of... <laughs> it's well dangerous. So that's all going on and then uh, they spotted us from the air and, um, and it boiled down to this one in the end, to our roundhouse, because it was a dwelling in the countryside. It would have been okay if we'd been horses, for example. We built a perfectly legal horse shelter. It looked almost identical, <laughs> about 100 yards away. But if we're humans, that's different. So, um, yeah, we had a long struggle. And basically, we kept asking why. We didn't want to pull it down. Um, went to court several times. Appealed several occasions. When we were nearly going to pull it down, there was a big demo in our favour in about 2003, that was, um, which was great, through Haverford West and also here. And people convinced us that we shouldn't pull it down, should stay fighting. Meanwhile, the policy 52 on low impact development was uh, creeping slowly through the process uh, with different officers and councillors saying, oh no, we've got to make it more difficult. Can't get, let them get away with this and with that and with that. And so gradually piling on the conditions. But anyway, it did get through the whole uh, policy 52 and it's it's there now in Pembrokeshire and in the National Park. And um, there's the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. So it's, it's there as a policy and it means that you can build in the countryside so long as you're um, you provide 75% of your basic needs from the land and you're not connected to the mains, that's electricity or water and you've got your own compost toilet facilities and you're very conscious of visual amenity and you use local materials, oh there's a big list. So, so we conformed with that finally uh, and then they were concerned about our effect on these woods and on and that we didn't have enough woodland to um, to make crafts and also get our fuel from it without damaging the woods. They didn't actually show we damaged in the woods at all but anyway um, so we got together with Emma for a joint uh, planning application so I took uh, a back seat over the last year I was fed up with the whole warrior thing and um, Faith and Emma Faith was Jane and Emma um, from over the field here who's, who's got the Thierry's Bridal site and she's wanted a whole little village of huts for ages. So they put in a, a joint application which also involves all these woods being jointly managed and ecologically run 
um, with a view to wildlife and stuff like that which is fine because that's what we do anyway and um, this time it got through fine permission so we've got three year temporary permission for our house and for the this guest roundhouse and Emma's got permission for two new roundhouses plus her existing three plus a communal hall and um, a barn and compost toilets so that's fantastic so it's a first really it's great and it means that you can get planning permission for something like this uh, now in Pembrokeshire and other counties are looking at it with a lot of interest and so um, there's hope it's difficult because in my opinion it's difficult because uh, there's thousands of people who would like to live more simply really and if they only allow through sort of 20 or 30 a year in the whole of Britain that won't be nearly enough we need about you know 200,000 or something I think before the crunch at least